Library Mouse, Home Sweet Home. Sam was a library mouse. If you were to ask him his favorite things, he would surely say reading and writing. Sam was a storyteller and a dreamer and a lover of words. But if you were to ask Sam's friend Sarah what her favorite things were, she would say exploring and having adventures. Though they had different interests, Sam and Sarah were the best of friends. One night, the two mice were surprised to discover half-empty library shelves and boxes packed with books. Sam's heart was pounding as he climbed up onto the librarian's desk and read the papers he found there. Renovation, he said warily. Sarah asked, what does that mean? Sam frowned as he went to the dictionary to see what the word meant. To make new again, he read aloud. So they're going to redo the library. But it looks perfect to me just the way it is. And if those plans are right, they're going to have to take it all apart before they can fix it. Where will we live while the work is done? The two of us will have to go exploring and find a new home, said Sarah. In the library kitchen, Sarah led Sam into the dark space beneath the sink. There's room in here for a couple of mice, she said. But the sound of running water in the pipes made Sam feel very nervous. Next, Sam and Sarah crept down to the basement. Let's keep looking, Sam said with a shudder, eyeing a dusty old mouse trap in the corner. What about this? Sarah said, as they climbed up the creaky stairs to the library attic. Nobody ever comes up here. I can see why, Sam said, gazing into the shadows. There's too much space up here for me. I need a home that's a little cozier. Sarah said, then you could build a house right here, Sam. Something just your size. That's a great idea, Sam said. I'm going to build the perfect house for a library mouse. And I'll build one too, Sarah said. A house for an explorer who has adventures. First, Sam and Sarah moved all their belongings up to the attic. I hope they haven't packed up the architecture books yet, Sam said. Architecture, Sarah repeated. What's that? It's the art of designing buildings, Sam answered. And somebody who designs buildings is called an architect. Let's get going. We've got a lot of research to do. Sam and Sarah went back to the children's room and found the books they were looking for on top of a box. The books were filled with pictures of all types of buildings. This is the kind of thing I like, Sam said, studying classical buildings from ancient Rome. And this looks great to me, Sarah said, looking at a Mongolian home called a yurt. The two mice gathered materials from anywhere and everywhere in the library. Then they hauled their supplies up to the attic and began making their new houses. Building was hard work. Sam used cardboard and tape for the walls and tubes from paper towel rolls for the columns. When he was finished with his house, he stood back to take a look. That's all right, Sam said, but it just doesn't feel cozy like home. I love my yurt, Sarah said. This isn't the perfect house for a library mouse, Sam said. Let's go back down to the children's room. Maybe I'll find something to get me inspired. A castle, Sam said turning the pages of his book. You know what they say, a mouse's home is his castle. I don't have any stones, but I saw a package of marshmallows in the kitchen I could use for building. Ooh, look at this igloo, Sarah said. I could make one with sugar cubes. And if we get tired of our new houses, we could just eat them. Sam and Sarah spent many nights working in the attic. But during the day when they tried to sleep, the sound of hammers and saws drifted up from the library below. Finally, Sam finished his castle. It looks very grand, he said, and I'd feel safe in there. But it just doesn't feel like home. Sarah said, you'll always be a library mouse, Sam, no matter what kind of house you live in. But as long as you keep building, I will too. There's so many kinds of houses to make. Over the next few weeks, Sam built a cottage with a thatched roof, a Tudor-style house, a bungalow, and a modern house. 
Sarah had fun making an acorn-shaped house from Bolivia, an earthen castle from Togo, a Vietnamese stilt house, and a space-age geodesic dome. These houses would be nice for somebody, Sam said, but I haven't found the perfect house for a library mouse. Come on, Sarah said. What's wrong with the ones you built? Sam frowned. I miss my library. He went back down to the children's room, hoping to look at some more books about architecture. But he found the windows taped over and the door sealed shut. Sam trudged back up to the attic. He wondered how he would ever feel at home again, like he had in his little hole beneath the children's reference books. At the top of the stairs, Sarah met her friend with a smile on her face. Come look what I made for you, Sam, she said. I found an old book in the corner. It's called an atlas, and it's full of maps. I stood it on end and opened it up, and just like that, I made you an A-frame house, like one I saw in a book. Wow, Sam said, lying on his back and looking up at the map that made the slanting walls of his new home. It's cozy and pretty close to perfect. Thanks, Sarah. Sam loved his new house, and he was very happy. But when he tried to go to sleep, he tossed and turned. With a start, he realized it was because the library was too quiet. There wasn't any hammering or pounding anymore. Later that day, Sam went to get Sarah. I think they finished working on the library, he said. Let's take a look. Sam gasped at the sight of the new renovated library. It was truly beautiful and better than ever. There's just one thing, Sam said to Sarah. The next morning when the children arrived... There was a sign that read, Home, and where to find it. Along the top of the shelves was an array of houses from all over the world. They're like the displays we had before, a child said. They make the library feel like home again, said another. And Sam and Sarah were the first to agree.